This seminar here, we're going to talk about the keys to catching big walleye, big bass, big pike. Now, that's an extremely broad range, species-wise, personality-wise, between the fish. But they all share one thing in common, and it's the times when you're going to go catch the big fish. When people will go out fishing, they want to catch the big one. It's always to go get the big one, to get the mounter, to get the fish of a lifetime. And what it has to do with is the time frame that you're fishing and understanding when you're going to catch those biggest fish and have the best chance to catch them. All right? So typically when I do a seminar, if it's about pike, I want you to understand the pike and understand the basis behind them and how they hunt, okay, what makes them a top-of-the-line predator. I get more into that. With this, we're going to be talking more about timing for those species to get the biggest one so you can get your wall hanger. If you do go out and get your big one, please do me a favor and get a replica mount made and turn that big fish back. That's the only thing that I ask. I'll tell you a brief story. I had a fella came in, boat show, when I was working back in Tolber's booth, wanted to go out and get a big walleye. I told him, here, go do this. When you get a big one, just release it. Well, he went out in March, went where I told him to go, sends me a picture of a 15-8 walleye, which is the biggest one he's ever caught, from inside his garage at his house. Well, that breaks my heart, okay? It's about this little guy right here having an opportunity to catch those fish down the road, okay? A lot of times what happens when somebody catches a trophy, they drag it around in their car just to show all their buddies. It goes in the freezer, they pull it out when their buddies come over and it goes to waste. Get a replica of it and send it back. That's all that I asked. Okay, guys. The reason why 90% of the fishermen out there don't catch that giant fish of a lifetime is because they're fishing at the wrong time. And what I mean by that is, is, is people, we always hear people say, well, I'm a fair weather fisherman. Well, that means you want to go out in June, July, and August when it's nice and warm out. And yeah, that is a pleasant time to fish because the conditions are nice. You don't have to chain the pickup up. It's not cold. You don't have to bundle up. But that's not going to be the time when you catch the biggest ones. Okay? It's not to say that you won't happen across a big fish, possibly. But I can tell you in my angling career, and I've surrounded my whole life based upon fishing, I eat, sleep, and breathe it, and all the big fish I have caught have never come in the summertime. They either come in the fall, late fall, or they come in late winter and early spring. And what I'm doing is I'm increasing my percentages by fishing during those miserable times because that's when the biggest ones, which are the females, are either feeding to get through the winter to brood their eggs, or they've been through the starvation phase of winter, they need to feed to brood those eggs. Females are always genetically going to be the biggest in the fish world. Okay? So, <clears throat> let's just take a look at timing. Now, coming up right now, guys, middle of February, I've got shows coming up. But I've got a one-week period in there, which is February 16th. And February 16th, you can mark on your calendar, and that week is when you'll catch some of the biggest walleyes down at Lake Roosevelt. Two things are starting to happen. The daylight's getting longer, correct? When you go outside, it's lighter. You know, 5 o'clock, there's still some light out there. So that gets the fish moving. The second thing that happens is you're starting to get some 40-degree temp days. So that's trying to help warm things up. The other major thing that's happening is Roosevelt's starting to be drawn down. So start dropping in a foot to a foot and a half a day. Those fish sense that, okay? And they want to get moving. They want to start feeding. Walleye and pike spawn very early, you know, between anywhere 42 to 48 degrees, with 45 being about the middle of the road, okay? Bass spawn a little bit later than that. They're going to spawn 55 to 60. But you're going to do the same thing with the bass. It's just going to be a little bit later. So the first time you're going to go out is going to be the middle of this month. And you can go out in the middle of this month after big pike and after big walleye. Because their spawn takes place pretty close to the same temperature. Okay? So here's what happens. I'm going to draw this out again. <clears throat> and I've got a DVD and maybe some of you guys have it called Percentage Triangle. It's secrets to locating big fish. I've done four seminars here at the boat show. This is my fifth. Every seminar has this in it. And I continue to beat it into my people, my viewers, my supporters, because I want you to realize how valuable this is. 
So let's take a look at this, if it's a bay or whatever it may be, okay guys? For those of you who maybe aren't familiar with it, we're just gonna rough it out here so that you have a good idea, understand why this is. Everybody here can read contour lines, correct? I know some of you have been to the seminars before. The narrower they are, the steeper the drop, correct? Further they are apart, the shallower the slope. Okay. Now, here's what happens. Everybody thinks that pike and walleye are shallow fish, correct? They're warm water fish, correct? We all hear warm water species, right? Well, to be an efficient angler and catch the big ones, you gotta think of them as cold water fish. That water out there right now is 36 degrees. May get up to 38 if it's a bright sunny day and you get 45 degree air temperature. What those fish are gonna do, let's take the walleye for an example. You're looking for a spot. Now say if we have, let's just draw up like a flat, all right? We've got a flat right here, and off of this end right here, the contour lines are tight, and then they start to pull away like this. They're tight, and then they pull away like this. All right, and this is an actual spot that we fish. What everybody wants to do, and your depth range on this, you're looking at about 28 feet out here, depending on, obviously, where the reservoir's at. Up in here, you're looking at 11 feet, all right? What happens is, with walleye, I've got a buddy of mine, I love him to death. He fishes 120 feet of water in the middle of the winter time. And he'll go out and he'll catch 30 or 40 fish. And they're all this big, okay? There's nothing down there at that depth that those big females want to catch to eat. They want to move up shallow, they want to feed on perch, they want to chase down rainbow trout, whatever it may be. They want something that's going to be a bigger reward for their efforts. So here's what happens in the wintertime, guys. Pike, walleye, bass, they all do the same thing early in the year. Your fish are starting out deep in the morning time. So you may have the boat sitting out here in 40 feet, and you're casting a blade bait or a jig, goby, whatever it may be, up onto this guy, and you're dragging it down, or a blade bait, you're ripping it back. You're fishing the deep water first, because they spend the night out here in the deep water, okay? That's their sanctuary in the wintertime. Then what happens is there's a driving thing. Take the walleye. Eyes are extremely light sensitive. You can't catch them on, your winter water is your clearest water, guys. Because the planktons haven't bloomed, the algaes haven't bloomed, it's extremely clear. Go out here and ask the guys that dive on the rescue. They'll tell you the same thing. That's when you get the most pretty picture underwater. So they say, well, walleyes don't want to be up there because their eyes are light sensitive. That's why I'm 120 feet down on a bright day because they're going away from the light. Wrong. What it has to do with is they want to get up here shallow. They want to get heat just like you and I. So at say 11 o'clock till one in the afternoon, these big fish are up here in 11 feet. Everybody thinks the opposite. They, keep, they start going deeper. You want to start out, it's the same thing with the pike, guys. The exact same thing with the pike. You want to start out deeper, work your way shallow, because their goal is, Chad's been with me, the guy in the back of the camera several times, you start working your way in to where in the hot part of the day, you're back here in 11 feet of water. Now all our big fish in the wintertime, the walleye, come between 11 and 1 o'clock in a spot that's 11 to 15 feet deep because they're up there sunning themselves. They're trying to gain just a few tenths of a degree to get energy to go feed. Then what happens is they turn around and they go back out. And you simply follow them back out to the deeper water. Okay, So that's just kind of a cycle of a spring, or, or, or late winter, early spring. Here's what I see happen, guys. We fished this particular spot walleye fishing for about seven days. We counted about 17 boats came through there. They come in, get on a 30-foot break, drop the electric motor, troll their spinner harness down through here, make one pass, don't catch anything, and they leave. All right? These spots like this, be it outhouse flats, casino flats, up the river as you're going up, getting into March, you're going to the island, 
you're going to McCoy's, you're making the next move to there to Cemetery or A-Frame, then Cemetery, then Blue Creek, then on up to Marker 5. All these areas are the same. They'll traverse up and they'll stay here and then the water's moving. It starts to warm up. It's 38 to 40 degrees. They make it to the next spot. And you just follow them up those spots. When this spot starts to die off end of February, you go up to the next one. Maybe it's the island. Maybe it's McCoy's. Okay? But you're fishing them just like this. You're working deep in the morning to shallow back out to deep again. It's an urge to get warm. All right? Now, with the big fish, like I said, the pike make these movements and the bass make these movements. That DVD covers that. I don't want to get total stretched in a just, this is just the basic of the movement. In the fall time, it's the same way. Okay? In the summertime, it's completely opposite. The big fish are here and they go deeper. Now, a lot of times the big fish never come any shallower than 25 feet. They may be out here in the basin of a lake that's 100 feet down and the big walleyes, as an example, it's 100 feet deep. They're 30 feet down, cruising the thermocline, looking for trout. That's why they get so hard to catch. All right? So, the ways that you fish to get big fish, and I don't care if you're going to talk to a Linders, any of those guys, your biggest fish, most consistently, are going to be caught fishing slow. Okay? Big fish will eat big baits. 10 to 20% window, I always talk about it. Fish are active 10 to 20% of the time. At a 24-hour period, who knows when that is? You've heard me say it 100 times, I'm sure. By fishing slow, you're putting something in their face that's easy to catch because they're trying to put on mass to brood the eggs. Take an example of that spot that I just showed you, that flat. In the morning time, we'll start out, we're ripping blade baits for walleyes. As soon as they hit the bottom, rip them up. And I cast everything. Rip it, rip it, rip it. That slows down. We go to a football head, 3 8 ounce, with a Berkeley Gulp Gobi on it. Just looks like nothing, looks like a sculpin, okay? Toss it up into these areas as we're making our progression into this 11 foot, and we're just dragging painfully slow. Okay, we were ripping like crazy before, now we're dragging painfully slow. So we're keeping those big fish eating because they were active in the morning and then they're slowing down as they're coming in here to get warm, all right? And we're slowing down with them. We're slowing our presentation down. Pike. Pike will eat anything, guys. It doesn't matter if it's this big or it's 14, 24 inches. They'll eat it, okay? Chad caught an eight-pound pike this fall, had a tail coming out of it, reached in there with a pair of pliers, pulled it out, was a 14-inch whitefish in an eight-pound fish, okay? You think of a 30-pounder, they're going to take something down 20, 24 inches, no problem. Will they do that all the time? No, they're going to do that in their 10 to 20% window. So what has to happen is you have to give them an offering to slow it down, something that's easy to catch, something they can't resist, soft plastic jerk baits traditional style jerk baits. Dead baiting, okay? Dead baiting pike is popular with the ice fishermen. 90% of your biggest pike that are caught, if you go through and look at the history over in Europe and over here in the States and Canada, 90% of the biggest pike that are caught on record are caught below 40 degrees, okay? Walleye is the same way. The Columbia down there, Umatilla, where all those big fish come out, and fishermen did a big article about it, yada yada. It's in March. It's cold. You're coming in contact with the big females. You could go out with the pike, start out in a deep hole, you're throwing a dead bait in 18 to 20 feet. And all dead bait rig is, guys, is a smelt, a herring, whatever you want it to be. Back in the Midwest and stuff, they use ciscos. We don't have that here. Yeah, you can do that also. The nice thing about doing it with a, with a herring or a smelt is that they realize the difference between a soft fin fish and a spiny rayed fish. All fish, guys, be it a walleye, a pike, or a bass, wants to eat a soft fin fish. Okay? That's why your big walleyes in Roosevelt, they consume a lot of trout. They did a study on when they released those fish out of the net pens, 
And they say before those fish get a mile away, over 70% of them have been consumed by walleyes. Okay? That's one of the reasons why everybody says trout fishing is getting tough. It's because the walleye population is going up. And there's more big fish, walleye, in that Columbia system than there is anywhere else. What do we have in that system? We've got smolt, salmon and steelhead, correct? High in protein. We've got rainbow trout in there. Now there are times when the lower section, when the shad come in and they'll eat the shad. Shad is an oily, soft, fin fished. These big bass that are happening, door shack, 9, 12 smallmouth bass, fourth or fifth largest bass smallmouth ever caught on record. Primary feed in there is what? It's kokanee. High in protein. All right? High in protein. So by going with a smelt or a herring, soft fin, there's more oil content in those, puts out a bigger scent trail, it's going to attract those fish in. The biggest problem that bait fishermen have around here, pike fishing, and it's not to our fault, you go back to the Midwest or up in Canada, where they dead bait, they're using whitefish that are two or three pounds. They're using big cisco, two, three, four pounds, putting them on the bottom. That's a huge bait. What happens here with our smelt or our herring is that bullhead catfish come and pull on them, the small hammer handle pike come and pull on them. Those ginormous baits like that that are just sitting there motionless dead, they attract in the biggest fish because the smaller ones can't do anything about it. In Montana and in the Midwest, where places where it's legal, they spear the big pike. And how they do it is pretty incredible. Cut a six foot hole in the ice, you have your dark house, you got basically a big frog gig, they drop down big decoys, 18 to 20 inch decoys. Take a two by four and carve a fish out of it and paint it red and white and send it down there with some lead. And you put it down just to where if your gig, gig and stick is five or six feet, it's four feet down. And those big pike cruise right up to it, come nose to nose with it, and then they gig them in the head. Okay? I don't approve of that because it's not catch and release. But that big old decoy brings in that big fish. Okay? I have baits over my tackle store that are 12 inches, and yeah, they will catch fish, but they won't catch them all the time. So you have to increase your odds by doing something that is slow and easy to catch. That's why the drop shot is so successful for us those of you that have the drop shot DVD.